So we talked already about the centrality of sexual norms to any society and moral system. So I won't repeat that. Um, sexual norms in the Sharia are tied to family and to family law, right? Because again, sex is reproductive and the family is absolute central, most central, most important social institution. And so, you know, legislation surrounding sexuality is absolutely uh, uh, um, paramount and it is part and parcel of our religion. It's not negotiable. Not something to say, oh, well, we believe in one God, but we can just change all the sexual norms. No, this lies at the very heart of the religion, right? And that's because of the centrality of the family and therefore of sex and sexual morality to the faith, right? Mm -hmm. So as every Muslim hopefully should know, sex outside of marriage, which is called zina, is strictly forbidden, haram, and it constitutes a major sin, kabira, right? There are major sins and, you know, not less major sins. Uh, And zina, which is sexual intercourse between a man and a woman who are not bound by a, you know, uh, Islamically valid contract um, of marriage uh, is a major sin, right? Why? It undermines one of the fundamental objectives or maqasid of the sharia, which are five or six, actually, the protection of religion, the protection of life, the protection of lineage and family, which is where the prohibition of, you know, uh, extramarital sex comes in, uh, the pro- pro- um, protection of property, protection of intellect and the protection of honor. These are the six, you know, overriding objectives that the scholars looked at the rulings of the Sharia, the divine legislation, and said, these are the six fundamental categories that are necessary for human beings to flourish, all human beings to flourish in this world and in the next world, that these six fundamental things have to be protected. And one of them we see is lineage. And to protect lineage and the sanctity and integrity of the family structure, sexuality must be tightly confined to it. And so the rules regarding extramarital intercourse are actually very strict and very severe because it's considered not only a sin, but also a social crime, right? That's potentially uh, adjudicable, you know, can potentially be, uh, you, you know, punished in a court of law. It's very difficult to implement certain of the, you know, stiffer penalties, but conceptually, you know, we don't have this notion, okay, my sexual behavior is just my own private affair. No, that's modern secular individualism. It's not, it's, I mean, it's not realistic either because our sexual behavior is, it has ripple effects and it does affect society and it affects many other people other than our, ourselves. And so Islam recognizes that and legislates according, 